Howdy ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim coming at you with a uh, let's play of sorts, or first impressions I'll call it, because we're going to go about this a little bit differently. And how we're going to go about it is by, um, well let me explain. We're going to take a look at Cozy Grove. And it's not me who played it, it's my wife who played it, and she played it on her Switch Lite. Now because we can't connect the Switch Lite to a dock, uh, to show you some of the things and record things that way we had to record things via you know the normal means of just you know holding down the button for screenshots and uh, or screen captures recordings and then you know then do a screenshot here and there uh, but uh, before she comes on before I bring her on and talk about some things what I wanted to do is cover the, some of the basics real quick and then I'll ask her about some of the gameplay and share it with you guys uh, but first off, we'd like to thank uh, the Quantum Astrophysicist Guild, <laughs> from the publishers of, the, of Cozy Grove, and Spry Fox, who developed the game, for giving us a chance to check this out for the past week and for us to come at you with this review. Uh, the game is showing right now on sale in the U.S. eShop for $13.49, so grab it while you can. It looks like that's a dollar fifty off right now so um, go go grab it while you can uh, if you're interested or think about that while you're watching this uh, one of the things I wanted to point out here is that I've heard some people say it's a cross between Animal Crossing and uh, Spirit Fair so kind of those two put together in those regards so and the description says basically uh, welcome to the, and you see here it's 1349, up there, woo, got my screens working, <laughs> 1349 for it there, and basically welcome to Cozy Grove, a life sim game about camping on a haunted, ever-changing island. As a spirit scout, you will wander the island's forest each day, finding new hidden secrets and helping soothe the local ghosts. With a little time and a lot of crafting, you'll bring color and joy back to Cozy Grove. So there's a lot of information there. As you can see, there were some features as well, but um, like collecting spirit animals, crafting decorations, going fishing and more. So you got some of the collecting and crafting things like you did in Animal Crossing. And of course you got the collecting spirit animals, kind of like the spirit fair side. But I'm gonna bring my wife on here and then uh, turn it over to her to share. Uh, we'll be discussing coming up here to uh, some of the things that she found while playing it and kind of given her first impressions of it being because she's played both a lot of Animal Crossing and a lot of Spirit Fair and um, we, the Nintendo Dads is now Nintendo Moms in a way <laughs> so you get to hear from a Nintendo Mom playing Cozy Grove okay, okay. I got my wife here now yeah I don't know when to talk <laughs> um, I brought her into the studio. <laughs> yes, our fancy home studio. Yes. So, um, since you like playing Animal Crossing and Spirit Fair, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I uh, I asked you if you wanted to check this out. You got to watch the the um, it, the what do you call it? The intro video or whatever, trailer, the trailer, whatever they call yeah. them for video games. Yes. So, and you saw you thought you would be interested. What from the trailer do you think intrigued you first to get? make you think of it you wanted to try this it's it's kind of a cross between Animal Crossing and Spirit Fair because you know all the characters you find on the island are ghosts and you're helping them move along which is a lot like Spirit Fair um, but it's a little it's kind of like Animal Crossing with dead bears I don't know <laughs> Animal Crossing, but instead of live bears, they're dead bears. Right. Okay. Right. If you were going to have a whole bear island. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll get into why they're dead in a minute, but uh, let's start with the first screenshot that I'm showing here, which is, looks like the creating, the creator part of it, where you create your character. Yeah. It's just like one screen of the character creator. You get to choose your hair, you get to choose your eyes and your skin color. It's pretty basic in the beginning. Um, I just thought it was really kind of cool. I think I must have chosen my eye color at this point already, but I don't remember. Um, I just thought that the variety of skin colors was really cool because I already said this, but um, Animal Crossing and you don't really get to choose your skin color in Spirit Fair. You have one character and the way that looks is set. But here you get to choose 
a fairly wide variety of colors, especially for the darker skinned people that might want to play. You can make a character that looks like you if you have glowing red eyes. <laughs> and you were saying that you're trying to remember, like we were going over some of the slides before we started here. And that you've been playing this for about a week now, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, it was about a week. Okay, and because uh, the way they described this game uh, to us is that it, to get a good feel for this is not something you just go in and play for a couple hours and then decide whether you're going to play. They said that please give it a week. It, it's definitely been an experience where your little campfire guy will tell you there's nothing left for you to do really except if you want to gather... Um, resources okay so you know when you can just say you know what i'm done for the day so half an hour hour depending on how many characters are active and have tasks for you to do or what resources you have access to because some of them take a while to get okay so it, it's it's definitely not a fast play game and it's not like spirit fair where i sat there and played for hours right this you have to you have to be able to put it down because you just kind of get to a standstill that's cool so all right all right so this next slide looks like your first when you first docked to this island yeah and i think the reason i just took a shot of this was i'm a little bit mushy and i thought you that like that said. was a nice little motto for the spirit scouts all those who are lost deserve kindness yeah all right cool all right, so here's the first video here uh, from when you were playing. We'll play it and then uh, see what's going on there. Actually, it looks like one of the videos disappeared on me. Oh, no, we, we watched this one. That's why. <laughs> it's a different... Uh... Ooh, in reverse fast speed. All right. So this is the first spirit you meet. Charlotte Pine. <clears throat> And it looks like all those trees and surrounding things are disappearing, but it's very interesting the way this uh, shows up on your screen because things disappear as you move. But I thought it was really kind of cool how as you interact with them and finish tasks for them, um, it goes from the boring, bland, you know, Dorothy in Kansas to, to what it looks like in Oz. So like All the colors and everything kind of comes to life oh uh, that's right you mentioned that before it was kind of like that wizard of oz feel where it's all black and white kind of like or dull mm -hmm. to where it pops when okay with all the colors there it looks kind of watercolor type very much so yeah and you can see where the light um the outside area where the light touches it definitely bleeds kind of like watercolors nice all right, so this one looks like you're interacting with that uh, Charlotte Pine. Yeah. So it's talking about something that's very haunted? The whole island is very haunted. Okay. So I was apparently having a hard time figuring something out. I didn't know what to do next. So you can buy a hint from uh, Charlotte and she will give you a little arrow that tells you where to go. That was that little magnifying glass pointer. Oh, okay. So let me go back to that here. So magnify. So, okay. You see how I'm standing behind the fire there? Yeah. I couldn't see because Flamey doesn't disappear. That's his name. Flamey. Flamey there. He's kind of like your very own calcifer. Okay. Um, and if you get that reference, you can be my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was looking for a feather for, I think, the seagull bear, which another character that you haven't seen yet and you can see it sticking out back there but I couldn't see it when I was wandering around looking for oh okay stuff so, behind there. so you can see that the tasks are over on the right hand side Flamey's looking for logs that's what that second one is but the okay. first one I was looking for feathers and I could not find the last feather so and I got a hint and there. gotcha it was behind Flamey gotcha ah, I see all right cool all right, so here we got, looks like you got access to what's in your pocket. Yeah, the resources. And it's, I, I still haven't figured out resource manage, management. Why is that word hard? So that's the seagull bear. I don't know what, what that's supposed to be, but yeah. 
I noticed that. there were some spirits there. They were hanging those are out. those are the imps. There are imps around. So these guys um, right here. Yeah, okay. they normally run away and disappear when you come by, but sometimes they have taken something from the bears, and your task is to get things back from the imps and they have a little question mark over their heads and they can't disappear so that's how you catch them oh okay i don't know if i have a recording of that interesting one thing that i do find kind of frustrating is it's you can't walk everywhere some stuff just disappears while you're walking and you can go oh, right yeah. through it other times there's obstacles that are like that rock. Set. And you can't <laughs> figure out why you can't get past it, so you have to walk around it. Okay. So that's that's probably to me the most frustrating element of the gameplay is not being able to just walk through everything. It's some things are, you know, just out of your way and other things you're like, nope, you can't walk past me even though I'm a tiny little rock. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so this is your save slot. So you get three save slots, unlike Animal Crossing. Right, you can have three separate games going if you want to, or you can, you know, have three people playing on the same Switch. Nice. Which cool. would come in handy because, you know, Sam wants to try it. Actually, I think I remember you telling me this, and I was like, oh, take a screenshot, so remember to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. So. But, I mean, I've got a lot more um, coins than that. I've spent, right. like, five times that at least. Yeah. I've upgraded my campsite a couple times, and... Gotcha. You know, I have more than five spirit, or five spirit logs too. So that was probably one of the first days I was playing. Okay. And every time I stop, you see that fishing rod pop up over my head. That's because that's what's in my hand, okay. underneath the backpack on the left. Um, that's the thing in my hand. You can hold any of the things in your inventory in your hand. Okay. Um, after the first day. Sometimes the imps will actually want you to... There, I'm stuck on something again. Uh, sometimes the imps will want you to give them something. So um, they'll have a little picture over their head of the, what they want. You know, somebody wants a sweet potato or a mushroom or whatever. And you still can't get close to them. So you can't just hold it in your hand and walk up to them. Okay. You have to hold it in your hand and then throw it okay. towards them. And then they eat it and they'll stay long enough for you to go over and and i think they call it harvest but you just you know click your a button on them and they give you a present okay nice so you're kind of gathering supplies mm -hmm. gotcha those there's the little spots where you can dig through a leaf pile um i know in the first video there were some circles that looked like they had a little hole in the middle by Charlotte, those were um, spots where you can dig. Okay. And all of those are just resources like mushrooms, sticks, softwood, hardwood. Okay. All things that sound like Animal Crossing. Gotcha. All right. That campsite's is. Campsite's growing a little bit there. The campsite doesn't actually get bigger, so I probably just you know. Some more stuff. I mean. Throwing stuff on the ground. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible at organizing stuff, <laughs> and I have a spot in the campsite where if my pockets are full, I'll just go, just throw everything on the ground and go run around and do more stuff. Okay. What's going on here? Um, I was, I might have fed that, um, animal oh, it's yeah, a bird. See the bird food there so he no, it's not bird food it's actually toasted nut flour oh okay so you you get walnuts that's one of your resources and I think I was frustrated because if you see in my my backpack I have a stack of five and then I have one by itself and I couldn't get them to stack in the, the backpack so I had to throw them on the ground and then pick them all up and it stacked them oh okay so yeah you and none of the stacks are the same number like the roasted vegetables are 20s i think you can have 10 or 20 of the roasted fruit i can't remember okay. mushrooms are only 10 that one above the nut flour in the the four on the side that's mushrooms the bowl that's three okay um yeah. and then you got some that's either hard i think that's softwood and then hardwood over on the other side of that oh, okay. row there's seashells 
Gotcha. And those bags are furniture and the gold one is a fruit tree. Okay. The seashells, once you've, that's another thing. The seagull bird has a, I can't remember what he calls it, but he wants to archive one of everything. So he's kind of like blathers. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. And when you give him stuff, he gives you a reward for everything you give him. Okay. So if you have, you know, if you've never given him roasted vegetables before, you can give him one and you get crystals and coins or whatever. Okay. Gotcha. My tools stack themselves automatically on the bottom. I didn't do that. Okay. So uh, get get you organized over there. Yeah. And you can tell when your pockets are full because stuff doesn't just float into your inventory automatically. Okay. And that's the little shop, Mr. Kit. He's a fox, not a raccoon. <laughs> so this, you can sell stuff to him too? You can sell stuff to him okay. too. And it ends up in the stuff you can buy. <laughs> <laughs> so if your pockets get too full, you can sell it to them, and then you have to buy it from them, and I imagine at a higher price. Oh, at price. a higher price, of course. Gotcha. At a higher price. And then that little symbol down at the bottom with the exclamation point? Yeah. That's your badges. That's rewards for, you know, fulfilling tasks. Um, there's a lot. I don't know if I took a screenshot of all the different badges that are available but there are a lot of badges okay so a lot of tasks for you to complete in the game tasks goals whatever you want to call them like okay. i think of more like the things that the spirits tell you to do is tasks and as you do more and more of them you get you have goals and that, that gets you your badges it's kind of like you know girl scouts boy scouts whatever okay so. and i think here i was trying to um show how fishing is kind of different. And maybe it was the fish names. I don't know. These aren't real fish, not like in Animal Crossing. It said you should have said something That's the name fish. of the fish, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So when you're fishing, you actually hold the pole in your hand and then you press the R button to um, throw. And it's the same thing with anything you have in your hand. Like when you want to throw stuff to the imps, okay. you press the R button to aim, and then kind of direct, you direct how far you want to throw it and you know the direction you want to throw it. And then... So ZR to throw it. Oh, ZR. I got it wrong. <laughs> okay. I never remember the name of the buttons, but I knew it was on the R side, not gotcha. the L side. Anyways, you aim, you hit ZR again to throw it, and then wait for the fish to notice it. And that grabbed it right away, but sometimes it'll bob a few times, kind of like an Animal okay. Crossing. And then do and you have to keep hitting A to no, reel it just in? just hit just it once? once. Okay. All right. Cool. Wait, what was that name? That's a Shadow Mouth. Shadow Mouth? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yay, Shadow Mouth. <laughs> All right. And there it looks like the last recording we have here. Is it? Yep. An ugly loach. <laughs> I so, don't know why I recorded all these fishing things. Probably because they're different fish or something? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I wanted to show that that one fish doesn't get scared away when I reel up the other fish. Okay. Like in Animal Crossing, the yeah. other fish would totally freak out and disappear. Disappear, gotcha. But there those fish stay so you'll you can catch all of the fish that you see if you get them on your hook gotcha cool well and it looks like there's some more as far as um what you've been playing obviously so um but you don't have any more recordings was there anything else you wanted to add to what you've been playing and not, and even like how have you been liking it compared to animal crossing uh, or Spirit Fair, or does it does it compare? Is it easy to just kind of like, oh, it's something different, even though it kind of does some of the same elements? It it's definitely different. Um, you know, as you move further along, you open up the island more, and there's more spirits, and um, you get little bits of story. Like I've got the mayor now, okay, and she's given me residency papers. Plus, there's a post office which I didn't take any videos of, but there's a, a postal bear or whatever you want to call her okay. and um, you get mail every day from the spirit scout leader and 
the reason you're stuck there is because your boat disappears. <laughs> so you're stuck there. And I think one of the most recent letters I got said that um, there's problems with, you know, all the boat rentals and everything, and they might be able to get me next spring. So I'm stuck here for a good long time. <laughs> but, um, oh, shoot, I lost my thought. Do you have it? Anyways. <laughs> I'm trying to catch it. It's floating around here somewhere. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, a maker bear, so you can make tools. He helps you when you break your tools, he helps you fix them. Um, and then there's also a tree bear who is honest to God. She looks like a wood bear and, um, she helps you recycle things. So like you have plants that grow flowers and you can take them to her and she will recycle them into ink. So I don't know what you do with the ink yet, but that's one of the things you can do. Plus she will recycle um, hardwood into sticks. Like if you have a resource and you need it to be a lower level resource, you recycle it. Okay. So like if you have hardwood and you need softwood, you can go to her and say, recycle these. She'll break them down to the next lowest thing. Whereas the maker will take them and go up. So with the maker, you can make lamps. And one of the things about lamps, I figured out this way too late, like just a couple days ago. If you make a bunch of lamps, you kind of chain them together so that like the area that the bear lights up, then you can place your lamp right at the outside edge of that and it'll light up more. Okay. They only work where there's already light. Okay. But you like to have the areas lit up because it's easier to tell when you're looking for things. It's easier to see where resources are. Um, tr fruit trees, you can't re you can't harvest the fruit from them when they're not lit up. Okay. So um, I haven't found out yet how to keep everything lit up. So like every day, the the bears have to relight their sections. Yeah. Um, I have a baker bear now, and she will she helps take food like the greens there on the screen right now. You give her 10 of them and she'll make them into fancy greens. Okay. And so it's one way to, to take your resources and upgrade them too. And I have two birds at my campsite now and the one wanted fancy greens. <laughs> so I had to make sure I got that. Usually it takes about an hour for those to come into the post office. I don't know why the baker stuff ends up at the post office, but. <laughs> so the website or Nintendo site says one of the features is that this is a 40 plus hour campaign filled with side quests designed to span months of playtime. Oh, absolutely. I can see that for sure. Whereas with Spirit Fair, it was a matter of a couple of weeks and I just, I kind of sat there and just plowed through that game. Yeah. This is a real time game. So in that respect, it's like Animal Crossing. You're not, you can't make time go faster. You can't go sleep through the night so that you don't have to you know make time pass yeah but um it's it's a cute little game <clears throat> i like the the characters are cute uh not you that see. you know a bunch of grown men who are nintendo dads are looking for cute games necessarily <laughs> but we have we have all kinds of people that yeah, like I to know. play games so um uh but do you, do you see yourself continuing this game and yeah. all the way through I don't, I'm sometimes not really good about the all the way through. Cause you know how my island looks in Animal Crossing. It's like, yeah. I've got all the people there and I got to where KK Slider's there, but I'm not terraforming or anything. So it's like, I got the main goal, but I don't want to go further cause I don't know what to do. Okay. It's, it's going to be interesting cause there's things like that little yellow birdhouse. Yeah. I've got like four birdhouses and I don't know who they're for yet. I just stick them in my storage. Gotcha. I got a bunch of stuff that I'm like, I don't know what to do with this yet. Right. Okay. Very cool. So yeah, it's, it's definitely something I could see myself playing. Maybe not every day, but it's because it's not something that requires a huge daily time commitment. I think it's easier for definitely for a casual gamer. Okay. For sure. Yeah. And I was, with the amount of content this game sounds like it has, I'm surprised that it's fifteen dollars for the amount of content in there. Yeah, well, there's 
I, I mean, I'm sure that the developer, whoever, will probably have updates, just like most other games do. Um, sometimes it'll get like it'll lag really bad when the game saves. Okay. So there's things that could be improved on, but um, all in all, it's definitely worth 15 bucks for sure. Okay. And yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is on sale in the U.S. eShop for thirteen dollars and forty nine cents. Oh, um, dollar fifty off. Yeah, dollar fifty off, and That's it is crazy. available now. And as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, too, thanks again to the publisher and developer for giving us a copy to for uh, Nora to check out. And oh, was that just going to be your wife? <laughs> or do I get a name? Yes, you get a name. <laughs> so. But that's that's just essentially our first impressions or her first impressions of the game, and hope this helps you make your decision on what you're going to do with check either checking it out for yourself. That's always one thing I wish that more developers would do is um, I don't know how big this developer is because they are an indie developer if they could do this, but a demo always helps, and I think if they had a demo of this game, it would help others make a decision on whether they would want to buy this. But hopefully this video helps uh, you see more. And if you have any questions, always hit us up at Nintendo Dads on Twitter. And I can always shoot them to my wife to say, hey, somebody's got a question. Or you can... Yeah, because I know so much about this game. Well, you do. You've been playing it. <laughs> uh, or you can leave a comment on the video. And I'll also let, make sure it gets to her and we'll get a response. And I'm technically on your Discord. Yes. I can't remember which rooms I'm in, but I, I can actually talk to people on there yes join our discord and you can come talk to my wife about uh the game <laughs> <laughs> such a big draw so when that with that this is tim signing off with his wife nora thanks for stopping by and check you later bye bye don't laugh it's my that's my <laughs> sign off check you later man <laughs>